But this leads us um, <laughs> perfectly into what we really wanted to talk about is, is this dude made a really good video. We'll link it at the bottom. He's like, everything collapsed in 2020. Uh, Every, it's all been weird since 2020. Uh, and he's basically a uh, young black dude. He seems like a smart guy. He's walking through the forest, like thinking, you know, uh, deeply about things. It's a things. compelling video. It really is. Um, he's a compelling young man. I, I want to see more videos from him. Anyway, so he's talking about, you know, how we stopped going to work. We realized it was all foolish. We realized, like, what we're doing with our lives. We need to see our family and relax more. Mm -hmm. And we have made this point similarly, but in a different way. It's like it was always a house of cards. Right. We were always just finding ways to twiddle our thumbs and keep busy. Like, we can't let the people see that it was all <laughs> bullshit. Because they'll be like, what am I doing with my life? Well... That's why everything now is a little bit weird. Well, you talk about it all the time. There's w what percentage of people feel like they have a job that doesn't matter? It's like 40 percent. And then I guess there's no way to actually tell how many people have jobs that don't matter. At, at least when you're talking about white collar jobs. Yeah. Like the excess jobs of corporations yeah. and government. And my uncle used to go on about this all the time. And we were like, that's crazy, uncle. But he was saying in the 90s, there's going to be two classes of people. The people who work for the government. And they get basically benefits and health care and all these mm -hmm. good things. And then there's going to be the class of people who are like us. And we make stuff. Right. We're the taxpayers. We produce whatever. And what we're seeing now is that class of people who are, if not in the government, in this other massive organization that you're talking about that basically works the same way. Yeah. Um, well, any massive organization, right? Like. The uh, for a little while there were those videos going around about like oh what my day follow me around my day working at Google, <laughs> and it was just all these like cute little college girls going to their like six figure Google jobs where they don't do anything. They are in they are like in an administrative role or something. They're not coding. They're not in decision making positions. But there's other stuff to do. Sure. We'll talk about that because uh, X got rid of all those people. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, because those videos went around for a long time, and they're like, well, first I stop at the this little coffee shop. All of it's free, and then I go to my little gym, and this is free, and then I do this, and then I'll do an hour of work, and then I'll go sit on this free balcony and have a free smoothie or whatever. Yeah. And shortly after those were going around. Like a lot of those people got fired, and <laughs> and that's even that's at Google. Like yeah. I feel like in the government, the government won't just take out jobs. Yeah. Like, it's and really that's where when like people on the right are coming up at a lot of this, um, uh, what is it, Project Twenty Twenty Five thing is eliminating a load of government jobs, and people who don't necessarily sign on to the rest yeah the there's Project a lot 2025. in 2025 that's not that but that i can kind of agree with because you look at how much money and it goes up and up and up and i am sounding like it, uh, no we <laughs> sound like republicans but we're actually i've never voted republican in my life no. i can't imagine ever voting republican because the republicans will not actually do any of this they well, will not actually eliminate these government yeah. positions they won't do it they're all part of the same machine so that is not the thing i think it gets put on a, as a republican perspective but if anybody actually looks at how much money is spent by the government and how many government employees don't really do anything and how much they get we'd all go like well this guy's not it, it, like obviously we need garbage men obviously we need cops like we need people who well, do those stuff. are the people doing the work right the actual work the privates that's what someone said it was in the civil war documentary by ken burns and it was a southern soldier who made it through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And he says, if I'm going to shoot someone, I shoot a private because they're the ones shooting me. Oh, yeah. And I was like, it sounded dumb at the time. But actually, that's like one of the smarter things because they're the ones actually doing the work. Right. <laughs> like if you if you kill, uh, and this goes with the manager, too. But if you kill like um, and we're not saying a lieutenant. No, manager. absolutely not. Don't kill a lieutenant. But you could actually be hurting your side because you could have just killed an incompetent lieutenant. Ah, Yes. And so you Especially want... Especially during the Civil War. Yeah. So you want their side to have more incompetent lieutenants. And let's say 50-50. We don't know. Because right now, just dealing with managers and people, I say 50% of them are useless and 50% of them are good. Right. So it's a 50-50 shot that you're actually going to hurt your side. But it's 100% that you will help your side by killing another private because he can't shoot anymore. Right. So that just comes down to who's doing the actual work and what it means. So that young man walking through the forest... Alter Ego Sean. Uh -huh. We'll link it at the bottom. Yeah. What was his, what, what, sum up his, his thing. 
basically that when the world shut down in 2020, people were able to see through the facade and a lot of the social norms got broken. So people don't have friendships. They don't hang out anymore. Mm-hmm. They don't want to go to their job, which no one ever wanted to go to their job. But now they're like, I really don't want to go to my job. Man, this job is stupid. Well, it's compelling because he's, it is a very honest, uh, you know, it's an honest interpretation from him of, you know, what he's experienced since 2020. Yeah, he's got to be, what, 10 years younger than us? Yeah. And I think what he might be going through, because he talks a lot about, like, yeah, you know, all relationships are different. So, like, friendships, this and that. I think at a certain age, your friendships change and kind of how often you see people change anyway. Yeah, Um, that's true. Typically because, like, you know, people get busy. And people get serious about a relationship or have kids or whatever. Yeah, once people get into relationships, you'll notice your relationship friends and your single friends kind of drift off, especially if the spouses don't necessarily get along. Right. If the spouses get along, you guys are friends for life. <laughs> it's super easy. But if the spouses don't get along, a lot of times it just sort of drifts away. It's tough. But no, him saying that it came from 2020 and like you're saying, like COVID did. COVID, yeah. like The before... lockdown. COVID itself. Right. We can argue how impactful that was. To some families, it was really impactful. Yes. And to other families, they didn't even notice. Right. The lockdowns. The lockdowns. And you and I are very fortunate that we are able to live doing something that we like. Right? Like, we're able to scrape by. Yeah. And I'm doing something that I really like. You're doing something that you really like. But most people, like he's saying came to the realization during COVID when they had time to sit and reflect that like, man, before COVID, before these lockdowns, I've been just wasting my life working, doing something, doing what? But that's what everyone always did. It's like you, you went out, you went to work, you met people, at least now where it's co-ed, you know, you Mm -hmm. might meet a person, et cetera, et cetera. You might meet your spouse actually over there. Mm -hmm. You hang out. And then after on Fridays, you guys go out for drinks. And that's very normal. A lot of times people will hang out with their work friends just afterwards. Like, let's go and, uh, yeah, get a drink at the bar. And that's healthy and that's good. But I think, so I I, I always think about, like, what my father was able to do with his job, which Mm -hmm. must have felt like I'm showing up to this warehouse and moving boxes from here to here. What is this for? But he was paid enough to actually buy a house to like live a life have savings like actually have a you know a, a real life with no skills his job was pretty much no skill like he, he drove a forklift which is crazy considering how smart your father is i know and i think it was my fault because they got pregnant with me and he was I don't like think well so. I think they really time wanted to start a family i think they're catholic of course that's what catholic people do of course but yes so i think there is that also, right? Like there, we talk about it a lot, that there has to be something for people who have jobs that require no skill. It's not even just that. It's like the job environment is kind of like your community Mm -hmm. because you have your family and your family used to be your job. Basically you worked on the farm and this was, these were also your coworkers. Your Mm -hmm. family was also your coworkers or like your cousin or like your kin like your, your extended circle those were your co-workers and then, you know i want to go back to hunter gatherer you guys are hanging out and getting the you know you're gonna go get a kill a woolly mammoth or something right and when your dad was working when he was younger that was dudes yeah like it was a bunch of dudes who were at the warehouse so that was like their social circle of dudes and i don't think it was as uh, formal as it is now mm-hmm. and uh unpersonal like it's basically your friend group right um and so now i don't know like, this is not what he's talking about, but in that time, we've uh, mixed up the workspace. Yeah. It's men and women. And because it's men and women, things have to be a lot more organized, institutionalized, uh, regulated. Mm. Because you can't just have a unregulated mixing of the sexes. Well, he, he had stories. He had some of the funniest stories that were just like, that would not happen now in any workspace. All right. What, name one. Uh, okay. He worked with Tell this us. deaf guy. Yeah. And they used to tape down the deaf guy's uh, horn on his forklift. So it was just going off and he would drive around with the horn going and everybody would laugh and make fun of him. But they're the ones and then who they'd have go to bowling listen. with him. They'd go bowling. But he can't hear the horn. They're just torturing themselves. <laughs> what what are you talking about? They thought but that was funny. That's it's, fine. Yeah, it's mocking a disability. It would be it's it would be a them. punishable He's offense. Fine. <laughs> this dude doesn't even know what's going on. 
God. He's like, so you you can hear and you decided to use your hearing listening to this horn for yeah. however long? Yeah. All right, man. Yeah. If they thought that was funny. Yeah, and it was an integrated workspace, like, you know, black guys, white guys, and they would have men. very frank, you know, racial jokes in conversation, but from every side. Yeah. So it was a very different, it was a very different time. I, I've noticed working in male workspaces because my favorite job, even to this day, my favorite job is working in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's just a bunch of people, mostly dudes, uh, just talking shit. Yeah. You just talk shit for the entire time. And it's fun. Right. Um, But yeah, there's a certain way that men can interact in the workspace and just in general that women can't. Yeah. And I often am that person that's like, you're not supposed to say that because you like make a joke because of... I don't know. Sometimes it's too emotional. I threw a party, uh, a party get together last weekend, and these girls were talking about something like very meaningful and deep to them. And I was like, looking at my other asshole friend, like, all right, I'm going to ruin it real quick. <laughs> and then I did, right? And my asshole friend thought it was funny, but th- those other two just absolutely did not. Yeah, you have you have very uh, kitchen humor. You have yeah. kitchen humor. So I, yeah, so you treat them like the guys. But there, there's a way that women interact is not the way that men interact. Right. So I can see how it could just be straight up more fun. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we take, you know, women out of the workspace, of course not, or that we set them aside because there, there is fun that women uh, like to have. And I think what you're mentioning in your videos where those women would get together and do those little dances – Like, that's how they have fun. Right. But it is very different. And so now we have a workspace, a professional environment that is so by these, like, manuals. Mm -hmm. Like, these behavioral manuals that people have to follow. And it does seem artificial. Right. Yeah, no, that's interesting. See, but as much as I want to get deeply into COVID and lockdowns, we have a rule that we don't do that all the time. We will do a COVID special at some point. But I think what he's feeling is... I blame it almost entirely on technology. I think that social media and basically what keeps us in our, what keeps you from going out and doing stuff. Like, we used to go to the movies constantly. Yeah. Um, We don't have to do anything anymore. We can do all this from our house. Yeah, and COVID kind of coincided with this uh, just uptick in technology. It just Mm. overlapped. And then I think people were maybe holding on to just, being human and yeah. like seeing each because, other. Because, yeah, it was just the ritual of doing it, or like not the ritual, but the like, yeah, the, you had routines and you kept doing things. And then maybe a lot of people during the lockdowns found it easier just to not do those things. And so the habit of it went away. And he's talking a lot about uh, dating and uh, friendships mm-hmm. and how people, you know, they don't just hang out anymore. And it's probably because you can check all those boxes through technology. Like right. if you're a guy, you can just watch and why would you need to date girls? Because girls are a pain in the ass. Yeah. And friends are a pain in the ass. Yeah. People don't really think about it, but of your friends, there's going to be one or two things that's terribly wrong with them. <laughs> and, no, it's true. I, I have uh, one or two things terribly wrong with me. It's like, whatever. It's, the thing was, is that those were still your friends despite that. Right. And the internet culture makes it seem like, oh, I should cut off X person because they're problematic in this way. And it makes it acceptable to be like, you know what? That person annoyed me. But you don't think that, okay, that person amused me twice as much as they annoyed me. <laughs> right. Well, that, you're talking about two different things. Because, yes, there is, like, these, like, social rules now. And the, um, what is it, good vibes cult that kind of has taken over Western thought. Yeah. That, you know, eliminate things that bring you sadness. I have friends that are a huge pain in the ass. Probably 50-50. To yeah. To be completely honest. But they are my friends. I have loyalty to my friends, and they will continue to be my friends, even though half of the times, sometimes, half of the time, let's say 30% of the time. Yeah. They could be a bad hang. They could be a pain in the ass. But you know what? Why shouldn't you be annoyed a little bit of the time? Yeah. Like, why should we be going around happy all the time? Because that's very north- that's a very northeast thought process. <laughs> It's a good thought, right? You're not supposed to be happy all the time. And then when you have kids, you're going to be like, well, these kids are annoying 60% of the time, and then gradually maybe it gets to 20% or 30%. All we've done is fill our lives with annoying animals and now a baby. Animals. Animals are annoying a certain percentage of the time, unless you're, like, super mean to them. Like, they're going to be annoying. That's why people... I guess that's why a lot of people are deciding not to have kids, Mm because they're like, they're going to be annoying. But it's like, well, the flip side to that is yes, it's more responsibility, but the more responsibility you have, the more you're needed, and the more you're needed, the more you feel needed. Yeah. It like, 
Yeah, and the other thing is that I think just psychologically we are we're checking in on our friends and like we're communicating with our friends on text and on devices and shit and it's not the same. And I think we can feel that it's not the same. That's why you got to throw parties. Yeah. And it's annoying like <laughs> you do you do your poker nights. Yeah. It's a, a group of guys gets together, you trust them, you hang out. There's basically no women, right? Yeah, I mean sometimes Sometimes somebody will bring a, a lady. Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. You know, you guys are respectful to the lady. But for the most part, it's just like you dudes getting together to do whatever you do. I have no yeah. interest in it. Let's go back to this video. Because he was talking a lot about technology and how we live in super bizarre times where things... I think he was describing fluidity. Mm -hmm. Because he was saying, oh, Trump was almost... Did what, a month ago? Two He's, months ago? At that time, two months ago, yeah. When that yeah, so he was almost a second. Now no one talks about it anymore. We've just moved on. We've moved on. It's because the social media has made our lives so short. The news cycle. We all live in this weird news cycle of what are we talking about now? What are we talking about now? And it's like, well, what did we learn any lessons from what we were talking about a month ago? Or we just moved on without actually going in depth at all? Yeah, no. And I think it's a result of it feels calculated. Like, it's hard. I see how people fall down conspiracy rabbit holes so easily because it all feels very calculated that this constant move on impulse it, like the media in it, it to look at it from not a conspiracy point of view it's that the media needs you to continuously move on if yeah. you if you fixate on something you might read a book about it and now you're not on twitter and now you're not looking for the next thing like well, we're feeding it it is like human impulse like we we've taken that human impulse that like complete lack of um of uh, focus mm -hmm. and exploited it and exploited it for like however long we've been doing this what 15 years people have been sort of on phones about that yeah about that. and i think we've just hit up we're hit we're about to hit a wall 